Good morning, North Bethesda. Good morning, car. How are you guys doing today? Good morning, random man walking through the parking lot. Good morning, vlog. What's today? Is it Tuesday? It's Tuesday. Hi. Uh, we are about to go into the city. It's 8 a.m. Um, got about a 40 minute train ride. Should be in, in Washington, D.C. by 9. And then, uh, you know, get a little walk to get to the mall. Um, we don't really have a plan. We're just going to go to, which Smithsonian do you want to see the most? Um, and that's the one we'll go to. Natural history? Okay. Well then, American history? You, you have no idea. Alright, well let's get down there and then you can decide then. So it took far longer to get here than we wanted. Uh, it's supposed to be a 40 minute train ride, but there was fire and smoke. On, on, the red line. on the red line, and what should have uh, been 40 minutes took us closer to like 80 or 90. So, long story short, it's 10 o'clock. We just got in front of the uh, National... This is the American History Smithsonian. The Mount hasn't seen anything in DC, so uh, we don't really have an agenda. We're just gonna see stuff, spend some amount of time in things. Uh, if we're done, we'll just move on. This one has the ruby slippers. So Mal wants to see the ruby I really slippers. Love Wizard of Oz. <laughs> um, so we got full two full days in uh, in DC. So we're just gonna do whatever we have time for. Okay. So let's uh, let's go. As soon as we walk in, there's a little placard that says Dorothy's ruby slippers are off display. It's like the one thing you wanted to. <laughs> well, there's there there'll be other things in here that you'll enjoy. Okay. I promise. Like this. It's the Batmobile. Batmobile. Neat. Did you watch Bill Nye as a kid, Mal? All the time. Yeah, I loved Bill Nye. And he's still doing it. He's still, like, doing... Yeah, he has that show. He has, a, he has, like, the revival yeah. show on Netflix. Did you see Mr. Rogers' sweater? Oh, man, that's awesome. Do you know uh, Mr., uh, me and Mr. Rogers share a birthday? Yeah, I know. Yeah, March 20th. Man, I miss him. One of the, one of the best shows ever made. One of, the, one of the best people to have ever lived. This wall iron is from 1910. Even even a hundred years ago, people cared about good breakfast. This looks pretty much like my heating pad that I have. I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on the limb and assume that yours is at least a little safer, but I I actually don't know. So here is uh, this is a bust of, of Thomas Edison, and then this is actually him at work. Um, he was actually a wizard, which is how he created electricity in the first place. Yeah, how it was invented. Well, step one, you have to get the hat. The entire section on cars is just really, really interesting. And they got all these old vehicles with the wood paneling that I'm glad that we as a society decided was not okay and moved on. This is pretty cool. Oh, is it? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I see, yeah. That's the loose. Juicy fruit. This is cool. Man, the ceilings on this thing are are taller than the one yeah. The the metro for DC, the ceiling's only six foot tall. So for like an hour and ten, hour and twenty minutes, I had my head down like this. So my head's gonna my neck's gonna be feeling kinda crappy later. Check out the big map of uh, 66. Wow. We traveled along a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a cool display too. It goes all the way up to Chicago. Where was it? Um, it's somewhere in Arizona where it was. It was uh, uh, the was place. Where we stayed at the Grand Canyon. Yeah, at the Grand. What was that? Williams. Was it Williams? I think it's. Yeah, it I think Williams. it's Williams, where the train station was. Yep. That entire place. It's between. Seligman and yeah. Flagstaff. Yeah. yeah, that place was like all about Route 66. That train is so big. Holy cow, man! Jeez, there's a section on the uh, on the Model T. Man. It's cool. I really, um, it's been so long now, I really don't remember anything about the museums. New for you. So it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna feel new for me too. What you got there? Oh my god, it's a boat. It's a really, <laughs> that's incredible. 
It's a really, really old boat. We got some of these old, uh, old steamboats. There's, mo there's so many models. Yeah. Like there's, like if you were just, if you're just big into models, you could be in here forever. This is cool. This is 1934 Martinia, which is the boat. Vacation cruises. Can you imagine like going on a cruise 1934? This this is an actual life vest from the Titanic. Yeah. Holy crap. And that camera was used to take it's photos like, of the survivors from really someone on the Carpathia. Wow. That's incredible. It's amazing that these things are you know still around. Wow. Look at our kitchen aid. Yeah, this is Julia Child's kitchen. I don't remember the last time that was on the air. This is one of the weirdest but most interesting displays, honestly. Just all the different lids. It's actually really cool. It's something you don't really think about. It's cool to see them all together like that. Look at that little pizza. Oh man, that is just, that's childhood, isn't it? Did you have the um the reading program where oh, you yeah, would okay. yeah I don't remember okay. yeah you, you got like stickers? start yeah and then you got free pizzas yeah this is the brown box the, f the prototype for the first multiplayer multi-program video game system wow that's pretty cool also got uh, looks like pong up there so this is uh, supposed to be set up like Ralph Bear's workshop. And uh, he's the inventor of the first video game. So this is supposedly what his uh, workshop actually looked like. It's pretty cool. I love little um, little setups like this. I think this is fun. The Altair 8800, Apple Mac, Xerox Alto. Design your own icon. Using the frame below, flip the tiles to either black or white. When your design is ready, click the mouse to test your icon on the screen. You mean, is that the vlog logo? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't read them all quite right. Well, it was it was it was a nice attempt. God, this thing is so cool. God, I just <laughs> I love this so much. Like the equalizer on the front. It's just really awesome. This is just all about the uh, evolution of the pacemaker, which I think is really cool. And the slippers are not on display, but here's some script, and then also the uh, the color test. And then here's the actual camera, the Technicolor camera. There's actually a, an extremely interesting uh, video on Vox. Vox did a video on this, which was really, really cool. Highly recommended. It's just so interesting the uh, the ways they they went about actually filming this thing. Because like this is the process basically. Technicolor, everything's so easy it's... now. But back then it was uh, it was a little more difficult. Is that a toilet? Yeah. Oh, oh my god! It really brings a new meaning to the word throne. Oh yeah. So it's like you're gonna it's like you're gonna wear it. Oh my god. I think technology has um, technology has come a little ways. <gasps> wow, that's man. You, we have better technology on our phones yeah, now. Disco chic. Yeah, that's definitely what's happening here. <laughs> How does it feel to be on a penny farthing? I don't think I could pedal because like, my foot's here. And yeah, it looks. Yeah, I think you'd need a slightly smaller one. Huh? You had one like that. Yeah, there's the iPod, a Walkman. I had a, well, I didn't have a Sony Walkman, but I had a, a cassette player. I we had were, headphones like that. Huh? I had headphones like that. Oh yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah, I, had, I used to listen to a cassette player because I didn't have a CD player until I was a little older. There's a Game Boy. I had that. Still do. <laughs> Howard Johnson. Look at the KFC bucket. Look, look at the image there. Yeah. 
how big that Howard Johnson's is. There's like not many of those left. Oh no, no, there's no, they're not, and none of them, none of them are this fancy. Look at the KFC bucket. The sign of your future, and the chicken. Vein. Oh wow, they barely got that to fit, man. This is Monopoly from the '40s. It hasn't really changed all that much. Oh my God, is that a Tommy gun? Al Capone in Chicago. Thompson submachine gun. That is cool, man. That is really cool. Probably one of the creepiest things that I did not know. Thomas Edison, one of his inventions was a talking doll from 1890. <laughs> Apparently it was a flop. He called them his little monsters. What, the pressure cooker? No, I was... Oh, yeah, well, that's cool, too. But I was looking at... Batman and Robin, and Superman, Victory Garden. There's an entire exhibit on gardening. <laughs> oh my, is that what those are? They're all US coins Oh, that's cool. I was, uh, I was more looking at the, the origami. That's really neat. It's like Meowth. Yeah, that's what that reference is. It's heavy. What is it? Two gallon pail, two and a half gallon pail. Dang. It says, hold about 25 pails of water for each load of laundry. That's pretty heavy. This is like the, the steps necessary to do the, the wash. It seems complicated. It says this public school desk was from uh, 1905 to 1920. Wow. Mal pointed out the slate, which is really interesting. It actually has some of the... Uh, Days of the week and months. Yeah, some words. I just, I find all of this stuff really, uh, really fascinating. This is super cool. We're now in a different exhibit that's all about voting. And this is a, uh, a suffrage wagon. This is really neat. There's a lot of like just just really cool little tiny artifacts about this. Which is interesting. A lot of history. These are all just like various knickknacks for promoting these candidates. Super, super cool. This is a glass ballot jar. You see this, Mel? From 1884? Wow. <laughs> Good God. It's incredible. There's another exhibit with even more of these little uh, knickknacks and things. Bob Dole. W, America's Ketchup. <laughs> Don't seem to remember. <laughs> I that. That would have been a great campaign slogan. I like W. You like ketchup? This is Susan B. Anthony's silk shawl. Wow. Yeah, Nashua, yeah. Salem, Concord, Portsmouth. This is neat. Yeah, I was going to say, we, all of these names looked really familiar, and that's why. New Hampshire primary swamp sign. Huh. The Great Historical Clock of America. Interesting. The creation of monumental clocks. It's remarkably big. A Great Triumph of Modern Mechanical Art and Science, 1894. Wow. So this clock is uh, 1769, and it even shows the phases of the moon and the sun and the planets. That's incredible. By um, a slave laborer in mm -hmm. the 1800s, and he wrote on it just to kind of proclaim that he could read and write. Oh wow, and this was in South Carolina? Yeah. It says, I made this jar all of cross. If you don't repent, you will be lost in a signed Dave. There's a typewriter from 1873. That's wild. And then right next to it is a sewing machine from just uh, a decade later. A singer. Dang. 
There's an entire thing on uh, Dia de los Muertos. And they have all of these really cool things in here. Which is really, really interesting. Holy crap, this is the actual... Yeah. Oh my god. Sorry. I, I watched more of this show than I probably had any right to. Especially considering that it predates me by a bit. Swedish chef. <laughs> Muhammad Ali's boxing gloves. <coughs> All sorts of interesting things in here. This is George Washington's personal camp chest and stool. That's incredible. William T. Sherman. And his hat. This is crazy. This is the exact same furniture used by Lee and Grant, signaling the end of the war in 1865. It says Lee sat in the caned armchair, and Grant in the upholstered chair. And that was the same table used to sign the document. Holy cow. This one's particularly weird. Um, this horse is the actual horse, and it, it died in 1878, and it's been preserved since then. And that's just crazy to me. This is uh, General Philip Sheridan's horse, Winchester. Wow. How many rivets can you drive in 30 seconds? You have to put the gun pulse against the green light. Too tight. <laughs> How'd you do? Some didn't work. Great job. Now you can. <laughs> <laughs> this is really cool. It says American factories were the Allies' secret weapon outproducing the Axis powers. There's an entire exhibit about all of the gowns worn by the first ladies. Martha Washington's China. Wow. Holy cow. It's just amazing that this stuff has stuck around for so long. Here's more of the inaugural ball dresses for the four most recent first ladies. Well, five most recent, because this is Michelle Obama's, and I think that is Melania's. Mary Todd Lincoln. Wow. And then the evening bodice, he just changed them out when it came party time. <laughs> party time. <laughs> so, um, we've seen just about everything we could possibly see at the American History Museum. What do you think? It was good. It was good. Different? Yeah. It's, um, I mean, and I didn't even begin to film, like, so many things. You have to come here and see it yourself, but just a few little interesting things. It was fun. What do you want to do next? Uh, grab lunch. I like that idea. We decided to just save time. We'd come downstairs to, I think it's called the Stars and Stripes Cafe. It's whatever is in the American History Museum. It's actually pretty good. It's a little pricey, as museum food, I guess, would be. But at least it's better than what I would assume museum food would taste like. I've got a burger with some bacon and onions on it. I've got a brat. It's like you're reminded of home. The place down here is pretty big. We'll finish this up, and then we'll be um, on to... Nat, nat, natural history? Yeah, I think it's right behind you. Okay. National Museum of Natural History. We walked by here earlier and uh, there, was, there was a huge line, so now it's easier to get in. One of the things that Mal has been commenting on are the birds around. And as soon as we walk in, on the ground floor is an exhibit called Birds of BC. So we get a chance to actually check out all of the birds and stuff up close. It's a huge, uh, huge display. 
Wow. That's really cool. It's a scratch your itch for seeing the birds up close. I mean, a little less interesting. Oh, okay, so you just miss home. Very cool. And behind us, there's some huge ones. You see the eagle? Dear God. The golden eagle's even bigger. And like, the, the talents? Holy crap, man. One of those things get a hold of you? Oh, it would be bad news. The Carolina parakeet is really cool, but unfortunately extinct. We were also marveling at how cute these little tiny owls are. They're so small. I said we have these in our backyard. Yeah, one of these guys, one of these grebes here, I think. You know more about the birds than I do. Because I pay attention to the ones in our backyard. Well, you also look out the window, which I don't do. Tundra swan. They are big. They are very big. They are very big. Over here was gulls. We get them? Yeah, we... That would be an understatement. Have about a million of these guys. That's Henry. That's Henry the elephant. It's big. And he wants you to know that this is a really gigantic room. This rotunda. Man, um... So here's the deal. There's a million things to see. I don't even know where to start, so you just want to go in some direction? Yeah. Look at that big old crab, Mo. There's a crab up there, a jellyfish, a turtle, got a big whale. Oh, you found the giant squid. Mm -hmm. Man. Dang. This is a really cool uh, exhibit. Kind of shows the varying life that exists in just a small portion of beach. Do you see like beach differences, like black sands here in Hawaii? Um, oh, that's Caribbean. Neat. This is what ours is like more. Yeah. And then like and Pebble Beach. Huh. That's at Acadia National Park. I wish we would have had a chance to go up there. Yeah. Partially for fallout, partially to see it, but mm -hmm. another time. Man, it's hard to get a scale on, on camera, but the, the polar bear is scary huge. Oh man, a coelacanth. Holy cow, man. I think it's a dinosaur. I know. That is a monster of a fish. You can only catch it when it's raining or snowing. Ba -ba -ba -dum -ba -dum -dum. The story of the coelacanth is actually really fascinating. It says that scientists thought they were extinct, you know, 60 million years ago, and then one was caught in 1938. And since then, there's been a few others captured. That's so cool. This is super fascinating. The different percentages. This fossilized Neanderthal skeleton is one of 10 individuals excavated from Shanidar Cave in Iraq. That's cool. Notice the part, uh, the partially healed, healed stab wound on the ninth left rib. The depth of the cut indicates a sharp instrument stabbed his chest and probably collapsed his lungs. This so the evidence. And it's partially healed, so he was healing from it. Evidence but of the oldest known homicide or attempted homicide. That's where the E is. Yeah. That's wild. It says he suffered from arthritis. That's just, that's so cool, man. This entire museum is really cool. This is all very fascinating. Wow. That is so, so, so cool. Wow. It's a brown bear? What would you do if you encountered one of those, man? Die. Die? <laughs> Just die. It's basically Sagan. You, you said it's basically Sagan? Uh-huh. Um, a little bigger. What's that animal? Huh? What's that animal? Uh, that's a G-I-R-A-F-F-E. Right. Yeah, a, a giraffe. I mean, this thing. Look at its mouth. Wow. There's so much stuff here, man. Like, so, so much stuff. That's cute. Man, you can, you can buy those, like, as pets. Yeah. 
if he really wanted to. And it would attack birds. Here's the skeleton of a domestic cat. That's what Sagan and Kep look like underneath. Look at their claws. Yeah. That's really cool. Look at that ostrich. They're so tall. They are big, big birds. Oh, it's a kiwi! They have just the tiniest little bones. <coughs> wow. Look at this frog. Eastern narrow mouthed frog. It just, it, the bones, it's just got these tiny little bones. Snake skeletons are fascinating. Look at the python. Bow constrictor. Huh? Yeah. You see how thick they are? Yeah. They are big snakes. I've seen a few. Wow. It's really cool. Modern day dinosaurs. I don't think I realized that the sword, swordfish was so big. I mean, normally you don't see them that big. I mean, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, that is just a gigantic fish. I like all of the different pictures inside of the coffin tell like different stories. That's really cool. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. He's a big guy. Cool to get a big old T Rex here. It's a big one. One of the little placards was neat. It said that um, there's an estimated five million um, known insects, but only a fifth of those have ever been discovered. So, like, we suspect that there's five million, but we're still missing four million of that number. There's a bunch of uh, exhibits on falling rocks from space, aka meteorites. And there's all these actual examples. Touch a piece of Mars. Taken by the Viking spacecraft in 76, this photo of the Martian surface shows the rocky rubble created by impacts. So you can actually touch. Wow. No, oh, I touched Mars. It happens near volcanoes, like there are the hexagon ones in Northern Ireland. I wanted to that form these pillars from lava shooting out. Oh. Minerals from Bisbee. Yeah, everything is gorgeous. This entire section is really cool. It just shows all of these different uh, rocks and minerals and things. There's so much information here. There's, I've only shown like 1% of everything that we've seen in this museum thus far. Minerals that glow in the dark. See, that's cool. That's really cool. It says throughout all of history there's only been enough gold to make a cube about 59 feet on the side. Like when you think about it, I guess it's not that much. Interesting. It'd be interesting to see it next to um, pyrite. You know, so you could see what the differences were. Yeah, I think it's a lot more yellow. Maybe yeah. Kind of, this one has pyrite in it. Okay, yeah, a little bit. I think the little specks are gold on top because they're yeah. more yellow. Here's silver and copper. This is so, I don't know, this is all just really interesting. It kind of takes me back a little bit because you learn about all these little details of things in school. But I've been out of school for so long. This is really cool because it shows what it was before. And then the cut stone. Yeah, you know, because everyone knows, oh, it, you know, the cut stone looked like this. And this is like, well, this is what it looks like before that happens. And that's Roll Diamond? Yeah. yeah. There's a, most of them are from the Bridge. Almost 7.9 carats. Oh, cool. So this must be very wow. rare. That's really cool. Isn't the radiated green diamond? <laughs> they have all sorts of stuff. I didn't realize they weren't all circle. Um, like the same shape around the ads. Some are square, some are oval. That is the Hope Diamond. So we just finished up at the uh, National, oh, thank you. <laughs> just shove this back into my jacket. The National Museum of uh, Natural, Natural history. history. What do you think? This is interesting. I don't think it was as good as American history. 
Yeah, well, I think I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that at the American History Museum, you're seeing a lot of stuff that you don't normally see when you go to other like museums and things. Yeah. And like at the at the nat uh, natural history, it's a lot of stuff that you've seen before. Yeah, you know, like skeletons of animals. Exactly, so. exactly. Yeah. But it's still cool. It's still really big. Um, it's like a little past three. A lot of the, the museums and stuff close around five. Um, so we have time to do maybe one, possibly two more things. Just jump in the art museum and see what there is. Yeah, the um, the it's what's it called? It's not called the art museum. It's called like, the gallery of art. Some fancy, Some. unnecessarily fancy names. So you're gonna walk uh, two blocks down and see that. Um, I mean, we only have two days. There's not enough time to see all the things. There's so many cool things around to see, but we'll see the things that you want to see yeah. that are most important to you. <laughs> That's a big piece. This is also a big piece. Ah, time to look at smart. Hmm. To be honest, I've looked around a little bit and I haven't seen any pieces I recognize. They have that one Da Vinci. Hmm? They have a Da Vinci. Oh, do they? They have that one. I vaguely recognize that. I really like the general aesthetic of this room. We have like this giant echoey room with all these gigantic pieces of art. And the and the frames, man. The frames are crazy. What'd you say? Yeah. It's like she's um it's like she's a dog and she has she, she has fleas and she's not supposed to scratch. This is the back of it? Yep. Why is the back of it a thing? That's strange. And this is the front. Hmm. One of the problems is that this image, Madonna and Child, is basically in here about 15,000 times. Like everything is, everything is Madonna and Child. And there's like, there's a few famous pieces that are Madonna and Child that are recognizable, but not in here. And they all feel like really vaguely familiar, but it's all the same. It's, it is, at its most, you know, core, its essence, Bible fan art. I mean, really, that's, that's what it is. This is a big room. Look up. I did. Wow. It's really impressive. The pinks and the purples are kind of reminiscent of the piece you just did. A little bit. Maybe not quite to this level. Do you see level. how there's detail, but there's also still color here? Mm-hmm. That's what I had been planning originally, but I did all the violet and I liked it. It's a piece by Monet. Camille Monet was his wife. Mal pointed this one out. It's a raw. Here's the color of this. You can see the point looks better on this one. You said he only did like a few he pieces? Really? Yeah. Huh. Look at the pointillism. Yeah. Isn't it cool? And you said this is the same guy that did Sunday in the Park? Yeah. Hmm. These are all pieces by Seurat. He would go and do little studies and then put them together in a bigger composition. So like, do you see 13? Mm-hmm. That, those girls are in the Sunday in the Park piece. Hmm. Yeah. So he would go and do these little things there, and then he would go back to a studio where he worked on that massive piece for years. Another piece by Monet. Japanese footbridge. I think I vaguely remember that one. <laughs> piece by Van Gogh. Roses. I've never seen this one, like in books. I really like it. Hmm. There's another Van Gogh piece. It's a lot. And then a, uh, one of one of the many self-portraits, but not not the famous self-portrait you were saying. It's one of them. There's a few. I feel like I've I've seen this one. <laughs> they all have. But that's the thing that <laughs> he does so yeah, okay. because he only did ballerinas. They all feel the same. I remember studying Degas a little bit in college. He really had a thing for ballerinas. So these are both Monet? Yes. And they're the same spot, just different times of day because he was like, the colors change. So he painted them multiple times. Huh. That's gorgeous. Man. Look at the detail. 
the detail in the rocks. Good lord. This must have taken forever. That's really neat. We finished up in the west building for the art, and there's a separate east building. So we're gonna go into the east building now. This is really cool. This is a cool little walkway. The hard white edge. And now we are into the contemporary stuff. And it's kind of hard to... The camera doesn't want to focus because there's not a whole lot to focus on. Walking on these is a lot. Yeah, it's like whenever we were in... Um, where were we? It was it Minnesota? No, it was Milwaukee. 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 That was it. I really like this piece. It's yeah. called Black Plank. It's a, it's a black plank. So Liechtenstein. Hmm. You see the slight rainbows on the edges of like the cakes. Yeah. I love it. And he used to paint like frosting and like he piped on those roses. Really? Yeah. Huh. This is a really interesting idea. 560 skin portraits. So here's Byron Kim and then here's all like the different names. And then they correspond here. It's really, really interesting. That's cool. There's Warhol. Huh? This one? Yeah. Huh? Oh, wow. Really? He was on Colbert. He was? Yeah. I think he's still on. That's all his Wow. And then he's like the stand back from it. Mm -hmm. You can go through it. It's part of the exhibit. If you don't go through it, you can't put yourself, you can't become part of the art. That should be a sign. <laughs> no. I gotta be honest, I am more exhausted than I thought I would be. I'm exhausted. It's, it's 4.30. And I mean, we, we got started pretty late because the, the trains weren't running, you know? So we got in at like 10. It's been like six and a half hours. My feet feel like they're, uh, my feet feel like they're on fire. So, yeah, just, I don't know. I don't know how much more we're gonna do because I don't know how much more we can walk. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. We'll get a little bit closer to the Capitol building in a sec. If we turn around 180 degrees, you can see the Washington Monument way out there. And that's one thing I've been to, um, I think this is my fourth time to DC. And it's been well over a decade since any of those trips. And I've never actually been up in the monument. But you said that wasn't anything that interests you. You, you have a fear of heights. I also have a fear of heights, but none that would prevent me from, I think, going up in there. That's all right, we don't have to do that this trip. We're already running a little low on time. At this point, it's, uh, it's, it's I think it's five o'clock. Most of the museums are um, closed or are closing. So I think we're gonna um, stop doing museums and we're just gonna walk around. So we're gonna get a chance to see the Capitol a little bit more closely. Then we're going to, uh, we might see the Supreme Court, which is behind it. Then we're gonna walk the stretch of the, uh, the mall to the other end which is where, I mean, the monument is, but then also the Lincoln Memorial is over there, the World War II Memorial is over there, the Vietnam War Memorial is over there. So there's a lot of stuff that uh, people associate with uh, DC and memorials in DC. Now we're a lot closer now. Yeah. We've done it. Finally. We've walked a pretty far distance. <laughs> Helicopters have we seen at this point? Going back and forth. Yeah, there's a lot. I was telling Mal, um, one of the last times I was here, um, George George W. Bush was president, and uh, I was here on a, a school trip, and we actually saw him uh, get either in or out of a helicopter, 
when we were over by the White House, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, it looks like if you just stick around a while over there, you'd probably see them see them land. It's gonna be super noisy against yeah. inside there, I'd imagine. So we finally made it over to the World War II Memorial, which is actually a beautiful, uh, beautiful image. Again with the again with the helicopters. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of beautiful uh, art that's uh, inside the walls, and uh, we're gonna ultimately make our way down there to the uh, the Lincoln Memorial. High relief. High relief. Yeah, like the background stuff is low relief, and then the ones that are really cool are high. They because come because so uh, because of how the forward depth. the depth. Yeah, that's the word because of the uh, immense depth of everything. As we walk away from the World War II Memorial, we get this, uh, this beautiful pool with literally two ducks. Two ducks. Two, and the entire thing. You making friends with the ducks? Making friends. Making I'm all out of sun chips. It's been a long, long walk, Mel. <laughs> to say the very least, yeah. but you made it. We've made it. We've made it. We're nearly to the top. So, bigger than you expected? Yeah. Or, yeah? That's what I thought the first time I was here when I was younger. I remember thinking that is much bigger than I expected it to be. So, uh, from here, I think we go left, and then we can go see the Vietnam Memorial. That little guy is enjoying himself a snack. Huh? He's just having a good old time. <laughs> it's just funny. He's real tame. Mao actually knows a, a little bit about the Vietnam War Memorial. You said you had your students learn about it? Yeah, this was the last one we did at the end of the year because we did a new piece every week. Yeah. This was one of them. One of the things I always felt like that I learned in college was that it feels like a scar. Here on this hill. Yeah. The amount of names on the wall is remarkable. Yeah. And every name is a life. You okay? Yeah, it's, it's emotional. I don't know anyone on that wall. Yeah. But, I don't know. No, it is. It's powerful. Uh, now, um, we've made a big, big walk, big turn. Um, there's still some other stuff to see. It's a little chilly, and <laughs> it's, it's gonna start getting late, but more things to look at. So right now we're passing the uh, Eisenhower Executive Building, which is huge and ornate. And uh, right on the other side of this is the White House. We're going to be approaching up from the front and turn around, which is gonna put us on the north side. Uh, we were actually approaching from the south side, but everything's blocked off and there's secret service everywhere. So I uh, have to go this way. Here's a little map that shows where we are. So we're down here in front of the executive office building. In a minute, we're gonna walk over and see the front, uh, well, the, the north lawn of the uh, of the White House. Now, we came from up here and we tried to, we tried to see the south lawn, but we couldn't because this was all blocked off. So we had to instead like cut down here. So we haven't got a chance to see the south lawn. I don't know if we'll get a chance to see that or not, but we can go see the north. Well, we made it. It was a long walk. You said it's smaller than you thought. Yeah, but there's some down. Yeah. It sits real low. Yeah, and this is also the north lawn. Uh, it's a shame that we couldn't see the south lawn, and we might be able to see that, that tomorrow. Map made it looked like it was all like, closed and restricted. I don't know. Beats me. All right. Well, now that we've uh, really gotten the Washington tour, we did a lot in one day. But I'm assuming that your feet are about to give out. You want to find a place to eat? That sounds good to me. Matt found a ramen place called Oki. Oki Ramen? I think so. I believe so. And that sounded really good with how cold it's been. This will be a nice little treat before we, I guess, get back on the red line and head back to the hotel.
This is one of the weirdest bathrooms I've ever been in. What? What is happening? Like, what? What? <laughs> what? What is... What is happening? Did we make it? No. It's flashing green, but it does nothing. Oh god. Finally got into the room. Uh, they had turned off our keys. Which they locked us out. They actually locked us out of the room, which is interesting. Um, yesterday, whenever I checked in, uh, you have to have a form uh, to get the special family rate. And uh, sometimes we go to hotels and they, they ask for it, sometimes they don't. So I always bring it, and if they don't ask it, ask for it, then I just keep it and use it another time. And uh, at this hotel, they didn't ask, and I was like, eh, whatever. So I just held on to it. Well, they locked us out of our room. So we would have to go to the front desk, and whenever I went up there, they are like, yeah, um, we just didn't get that form from you. And I'm like, oh, that, wow, <laughs> that's what this was? So uh, I was like, well, they never asked for it, but, you know, I can get it for you. He's like, yeah, if you could just get that. And I was like, well, I got to get in my room first. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they fixed the keys so I could go and get the form, and then it was resolved, and our keys work again. It's an interesting way of dealing with that problem, um, but okay. Anyway, <sighs> big day. Big day, Mal. So you had never been to D.C. before. You seem exhausted. I'm very exhausted. And your feet are like blistered and yeah. having issues. I felt so bad because, um, you know, I was like, all right, we're going to run, go to the Capitol building and do this. And then I was like, oh my God, my feet. But you don't have good walking shoes. No. And that's affecting things a little bit. I own like four pairs of shoes. One are boots that I bought from New York. And my hiking shoes, which wouldn't have worked here. And yeah. then I have these, and then I have my flip-flops, and then I probably have, like, fancy shoes, but I never wear them. So it's sure. really just, like, four pairs of shoes. Hmm. But did you have fun today? Yeah, I did. I what, enjoyed everything. What was your favorite thing? Uh, American history. American history. Yeah. I kind of figured that would be the case. <sighs> okay, well, um, fortunately we got a lot of the walking stuff done, if, especially if you don't want to go all the way, like, to the Capitol, or you don't want to see the Thomas Jefferson Memorial or anything like that. Um, so the big thing that we want to see tomorrow is the Air and Space Museum, because um, I I've been there two or three times. It's always been super super cool, um, and it's been so long since I've been there. We're gonna see that in the morning, and then um, we have a few things that we kind of are interested in doing. We're not sure what's gonna happen yet, but we will. There will be more, because Air and Space is is only gonna take like two three hours at most to get through. So more fun DC stuff tomorrow, and um, yeah. Yeah. One more day in D.C. Honestly, originally I was like, we need like three or four days in D.C., but after all that we did today, I'm like, no, we do I think two days will actually be fine. So this is, everything's working out okay. Um, yeah. Other than getting locked out of our room, which, you know, we fixed pretty quickly, uh, everything's, everything's going okay. Anyway, that is it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, let's be back tomorrow, shall we?